Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be right there waiting for you. Well, friends, that must be the theme song of Temptations. Tell me one place in the world where you will not encounter temptation. There is a place, a place called nowhere. Well, we read in the first pages of the Bible that in paradise, in the garden of paradise, the human person was tempted. And even our Lord Jesus Christ was tempted in the desert. So whether you are in a desert, whether you are in the city, whether you are in the monastery or the marketplace, or even in the garden of paradise, you will face temptation as long as you are on this earth and alive. And today we are going to see how we can fight temptations because it is through temptations that we will be winners. Friends, in the very first pages of the Bible, to be very precise, in the third chapter of the first book, the book of Genesis, we see human beings encountering their first struggle, encountering temptation, and in giving in to temptation, they lost paradise. And therefore, one thing we know is there is temptation wherever we go, wherever we turn itself, perhaps, we cannot afford to allow temptations to have their way in our life because you and I cannot afford to lose out on paradise. So now we're going to quickly look at those key points which are bound to guarantee us victory in the fight against temptation and it's going to give you the courage and the enthusiasm to fight temptations. Firstly, when you face temptations, do not be disheartened. Do not be disheartened that you have to face temptations because St. Padre Pio would say, a soul that is pleasing to God will face temptation. And in scripture, we are told that temptation need not actually be something bad. With God, we can use that very temptation to be a blessing to us. We read this in the letter of James chapter 1. He says, blessed is the one who perseveres in temptation. And it is this way that he is proved and he will receive the crown of life that is promised to those who love him. So what is St. James telling us in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? He says, with temptation, you and I get an opportunity to receive blessing. You and I get a credibility to receive the crown of life. And we are proved as being those who love God. Yes, the crown of life, blessing, and most importantly, the identity that I love Jesus comes with the struggle against temptation. St. Philip Neri says something additional which is so heartening about why we face temptations. And he says, do not grieve over the temptations you suffer. When the Lord intends to bestow a particular virtue on us, he often permits us first to be tempted by the opposite vice. Therefore, look upon every temptation as an invitation to grow in a particular virtue. So St. Philip Neri is telling us, if you are tempted, it is in fact a sign, a promise, an assurance that you are being called for a particular virtue. If you are tempted by lust, it means you are called for, to receive the gift of purity. If you are tempted by greed, you are called to receive the gift of generosity. Friends, this is the beautiful promise that every temptation brings with us. 
Secondly, when you face temptation, do not label yourself. Ensure that you do not have a label based on your faults. For instance, when you fail in some way, maybe you failed in some commandment. Now, the temptation we could have is to label ourselves by our failure. Say you drink, you can call yourself a drunkard. But this means you are condemning yourself to that failure. Ensure that you will not allow any sin of the past to label you. On the other hand, recognize that you are a human person created by God and whatever God creates is made for holiness. Whatever God touches is holy and you are sacred in your innermost nature. Recognize yourself as a saint, as one who is called to holiness. Thirdly, recognize what is the power and the purpose of Satan. Friends, very often we could feel very crushed when we are tempted, especially when we recognize it as an affliction of Satan. But you and I must know before God, Satan is a defeated enemy and you and I with God are super victorious. That's what the word of God says when it mentions you are more than conquerors. Remember, Satan is never more powerful than you when you are with God. Secondly, the word of God reminds us in this context, James chapter 4 verses 7 and 8. Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It is as simple as that. Put up the resistance and the devil will flee. Draw near to God because God is light and he will draw near to you. And where there is light, there can be no shadows. Moreover, we also need to be mindful of what is the goal of Satan. When Satan comes with a temptation, know this, the purpose of Satan is not to give you a thrill. The one purpose of Satan is to kill. Jesus says in John chapter 10 verse 10, the enemy comes to plunder, destroy and kill. Fourthly, mark your break with the past. Friends, we read about how when Saint Matthew leaves the customs post, leaves his past of sin, he celebrates his new identity as a disciple of Jesus. And friends, you and I must know when we are called to move out of a life of sin, when we are called to fight temptation, we need to celebrate our identity as a person of virtue and holiness. And this also means recognizing yourself, identifying yourself as you often see the apostles do. St. Paul always calls himself a servant of God, an apostle called by God. And this is how he came to recognize who he is. When you and I recognize that we are a celebrating people of God, we would not need to settle for the sad offers of Satan. We would realize that it is as foolish as a lion trying to eat grass would our settling for the little passing and deceiving pleasures of sin. Next, when you mark your break, form partnerships. Have an accountability partner. If there is some friend, some counselor who can firstly strengthen you and walk the journey with you and pray for you because that always ensures that day after day, struggle after struggle, we persevere in that battle. Nextly, do not ever get tired of confessing your sin. Friends, whenever we fall, we must rush for confession. Very often, as Pope Francis says, it is not God who gets tired of forgiving us, but we get tired of seeking forgiveness. Friends, at the confessional, we are encountering Jesus. We are encountering the grace of God. And it is in this commitment to declare, I don't want this sin in my life, that I will break out of sin. Next, we see 
Seek out the sacraments. There's such unlimited power in the sacraments. Why? Because in every sacrament, we are touching Jesus. And friends, whoever touched Jesus was healed. And this is a healing that we need from the spiritual sicknesses that temptation can bring into our way. Moreover, in every sacrament is a mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of holiness. And you and I can walk in holiness only through that grace of the Holy Spirit's anointing. Saint John Vianney tells us there are three keys to fighting temptation and succeeding. The first is sacraments, the second is prayer, and the third is vigilance. Friends, let us look at prayer. Prayer is where I am seeking out the help of God. And without prayer, we are bound to fall when the slightest temptations come our way. We would not even be able to recognize what a temptation is. Remember, Jesus says in Matthew 26, verse 41, it is recorded, Jesus telling his disciples at Gethsemane, wait and pray so that when temptations come, you will not fall. Friends, as long as we are waiting and praying, temptations will come, but prayer will be a shelter protecting and defending us from temptations. Yes, friends, temptations are bound to come. You could be a disciple. You could be walking with Jesus, but it is only prayer that keeps us strong and secure against the temptations. Most importantly, remember when the devil is seeking out to tempt you and make you fall and he finds you praying all the more instead, your response of prayer will disgust the devil. He will realize the more temptations he gives, the more prayerful you are becoming and he will leave you for a while. So friends, cheat the devil, defeat the devil with prayer. Next is vigilance. Friends, what is vigilance? Vigilance firstly means avoid idleness. Haven't we heard idle mind is a devil's workshop? And we know in that classic example of King David, a man after the heart of God, when he chose to be idle, when he refused to go for war and do his duty as a king, he was hanging around doing nothing. And that is when he looks at Bathsheba having a bath and has to face and falls for temptation. Secondly, we need to be vigilant because vigilance is a sign of humility. I must know at no point am I so strong that I can dismiss any sin and say I am stronger than this temptation. Our only strength is the Lord and we by ourselves are weak and therefore I must avoid occasions of sin. A lack of vigilance is a sure proof of pride and friends pride is already Satan's working in us. Along with this avoidance of sinful occasions, we also need to place ourselves constantly in the presence of God. There's a beautiful classic Christian writing of practicing the presence of God by Brother Lawrence. Now this teaches us to train ourselves to be in the consciousness that we are under the gaze of a loving God. And friends, when we are in the gaze of the loving God, we will know that we cannot afford to offend him. Remain in the presence of God. And the next is a very, very powerful weapon in the face of temptation. And that is what we see Jesus employing in the desert, which is the word of God. Whenever Satan comes with a temptation, he comes with an argument. He comes with an offer. And you just need to respond, not in your intelligence, but with the word of God. When Satan tells you this is a pleasure that can make your life delightful, you must know if this is not what God wants for me, I can never be happy in it. It is only God's way that can give us true joy and fullness of life. And as scripture reminds us in the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9, 
whatever our plans may be if it is not god's plans it is just not worth it because as high as the heavens are above the earth so much greater is god's plan over our plan for our happiness the world could tell you that this is great this is what smart people opt for this is what the whole world is accepting but if it is not god's word we don't want it because we don't want to settle for anything less than the best even for ourselves or should i say at least for ourselves finally a very time tested weapon against temptation is mortification it is said of saint francis of assisi that when he was struggling with temptation a temptation of the flesh he threw himself on a bed of roses hoping that those thorns would pierce him and he would feel the pain and fight the temptation and it is said that when he did so there was a beautiful miracle that happened till this day it is said that in assisi the roses don't have thorns and this is a great difference you and i can make pope francis gives us awesome example of how mortification can save us from the lure of temptation and you should just watch this little clip where he says when you are tempted to gossip bite your tongue so hard so that the pain of it will not allow you to gossip again friends as you watch this clip i pray that this lent will be an extremely powerful experience where you will have severe and several temptations and you will fight it with the superior power of god thereby receiving your blessing proving your love for jesus and persevering to receive the crown of life e se noi eh, alla fine della quaresima saremmo capaci di correggere un po' questo e non andare sempre criticando gli altri da dietro vi assicuro che la risurrezione di Gesù si vedrebbe ma più bella, più grande tra noi eh, padre è molto difficile perché a me mi viene criticare gli altri vuol dire qualcuno di noi no? perché è un'abitudine che il diavolo mette in noi è vero, non è facile ma ci sono due medicine che aiutano tanto prima di tutto la preghiera se a te viene di spellare un altro di criticare un altro prega per lui, prega per lei e chiede al Signore di risolvere quel problema e a te di chiudere la bocca primo rimedio è la preghiera senza la preghiera non possiamo fare nulla e secondo c'è un'altra medicina anche pratica come la preghiera quando tu senti la voglia di sparlare di qualcuno mordete la lingua forte eh perché così si gonfierà la lingua e non potrai parlare è una medicina pratica eh? è molto pratica eh? Reaching out to Jesus As mercy falls from heaven Here I am Here I am Fighting my desires As mercy falls from heaven Here I am Here I am Reaching out to Jesus As mercy falls from heaven, here I am, here I am, fighting my desires. As mercy falls from heaven, here I am, and this I know my God is for me, the Lord of all ages. Through all things remain 
May you nail pierce hands be upon me, Lord, as I place my trust in you. What can flesh do to me? I worship you, Lord, with all my heart. I lift my hands up. Touch my soul Here I am Here I am Here I am Reaching out to Jesus As mercy falls from heaven Here I am Jesus Here I am Here I am Fighting my desires as mercy falls from heaven, here I am. Here I am reaching out to you, Lord. Here I am reaching out to Jesus. As mercy falls from heaven, here I am. I worship you, Lord. Here I am fighting my desire. As mercy falls from heaven, here I am. I worship you, Lord, with all my heart. With all my heart, I lift my, I lift my hands, hands up to you, to honor to you. Honor you. And touch my soul. Touch my soul. Here, Here I, I am, am reaching out to you. Here I am reaching out to Jesus. As mercy falls. Your from mercy, me. Lord. Here I am. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus. Praise God, you are here Lord. with us. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. You are the Lord of ages. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. Your love, your mercy, your compassion, Lord. We reach out to you, opening our hearts to you. For your mercy to flow into us and heal us. Lord, we are wounded. We are wounded, Lord. We are waiting, longing for your mercy to flow into us and heal us. Thank you for being with us. For being with us, Lord, in the sacred coast, in this disarming simplicity of the host. You have come to us, O oh God. We thank you for being with us. You have decided to hide your your divine glory. You have come to us in the simplicity, this arming simplicity of the host. Oh God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Your presence, your presence of love, of mercy and compassion fills our hearts, oh God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you together with Mother Mary, together with all the saints, together with all the angels. My dear sisters and brothers, surrendering our life totally to Him. For me, to live is Jesus. What St. Paul said, for me to live is Jesus. I have no life outside of Jesus. Jesus, you. Only you. My life centered on you. The focus of my life, Jesus, is you. To do your work, Always my eyes focused on you. For your glory, 
for your kingdom to come on this earth. The only purpose of my life to be united with you at every moment, O oh Lord. Jesus, your blessing. i